This conference will now be recorded. Good, that's the cue to uh, to begin. So welcome back for the um, regulars to our little instruction classes for teenagers and, and, and adults. And for any newcomers we're using, we're following um, a um, high school course in, um, in religion by Father John Lowe. Uh, and this book one, I think it's the first of five tomes in fact, but it's um, entitled Chief Truths of, uh, of the Faith. And it's true that we do well to remind ourselves of the teaching of the church. We forget these things. Uh, sometimes we've perhaps not learned these things. And, uh, and it's true that in today's, in today's uh, world, the ignorance amongst Catholics is astounding. Uh, and of course, that's true precisely to lack of... Um, lack of um, um, sound catechetics and instruction, not least in Catholic schools and colleges. Uh, and so people just do not know their faith, so it's not surprising that it's so easily stolen from them. So it's important that we keep up with our, our study of uh, Christian, of Catholic uh, doctrine, and obviously doing things on a twice monthly basis together is, is a useful, um, spur reminder to, 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 to do this i know that the uh for example the dominican teaching sisters as part of their rule they have to study uh, christian doctrine they of course know well their christian doctrine catholic doctrine for a certain amount of time every single day i think it's a half an hour or maybe an hour i forget but so uh, so um so that's um so it's an excellent uh, initiative and here we are on page 96 i believe chapter 7 on the elevation and the fall of of man uh, so it begins with the words from the description of the book of wisdom god created man incorruptible but by the envy of the devil death came into uh, the world so creation um the um original gifts given to to the first man and indeed to the first woman uh, and uh, and uh, the seat of the serpent of the devil uh, the punishment for which was 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 death uh, so we begin looking at how man is made uh, in the image of Almighty God. Of course, man was not made as a God. You can only have one supreme being, you can only be one one God. But Almighty God himself said, in, and we see this in Genesis, let us make man to our image and uh, likeness. And the Catechism explains how man's chief likeness to God is to be found in his soul. Uh, his soul, of course, which is spiritual, uh, which uh, cannot uh, die which has intelligence and will and, uh, and memory. And indeed those three powers of the soul themselves are also in some ways um, uh, a trace or a clue or reflection of or a hint at the, the, the blessed Trinity. And Father Lowe gives the following, for, sorry, following parallel, parallels which help to show the difference uh, the similarities and the difference from the um, uh, human soul to Almighty God. So Almighty God, of course, is eternal, has no beginning, was not created, uh, is unchangeable, possessing all perfections, um, triune, one in three persons, a pure spirit, whilst the human soul, whilst also being a spirit, is created, uh, immortal, uh, is changeable, is a spirit but is united to a body. So the human human being is besides a composite being of body, body and soul. And God then is omniscient, he knows all things, and is all wise in his intelligence. Uh, whilst the human soul has intelligence, which reflects in a feeble way the divine intelligence, uh, uh, man's knowledge is uh, limited, uh, as also is its wisdom, prudence, and uh, and discretion. 
God's will, uh, all holy, all just, infinitely good, merciful, truthful, faithful. Uh, man's will is made holy by grace and, uh, uh, and in that sense is disposed to justice, goodness, mercy, truthfulness and, uh, and fidelity. In his operations, his works, God is almighty. He creates by a simple act of his will. And we saw last time how our almighty God precisely performed the work of creation in the six day period. Um, but the operations of man are limited. He cannot create, but he can give new forms to existing things. Um, so, of course, it's the. Um, it's the um, Dr. Frankenstein um, desire to create, create life. Man cannot uh, uh, create life, but he can give new forms to existing things. And hence uh, inventions and technology and developments and all these things are part of, of, of a man's um, um, applying his, uh, his uh, reason, his, his intelligence, his knowledge and, and, and so on. We're going to see how the first man was not only the natural image of God, resembling God in his soul, uh, but the bountiful creator also wished his rational creature to come as near to resembling him as, as, it, uh, as it's possible for a creature to come. And hence he destined him for a supernatural end, the eternal vision of God and communion with God in uh, heaven. Uh, in order to enable him to attain this end by his own activity, or rather, or rather by cooperating with, with Almighty God's grace, God raised him above all earthly temporal things by endow, endowing him with sanctifying grace. Um, thus, Adam was not only good, as all the things that God had created were good, but he was holy and in a very special manner, pleasing uh, uh, to God and because he was holy God adopted him as his child and gave him the right to inherit the kingdom of heaven and you know I mentioned this I think on a previous occasion how the um, ecologists of our time blame almighty God and his divine revelation and the Bible and uh, and uh, Christianity precisely for claiming that man has a special place in this world. We've just seen man created in the image and likeness of God, naturally and supernaturally. Um, and the modern ecologists would say, no, man is just uh, is just uh, one part of creation, and therefore should not lord it over the rest of creation, as if he had no divine vocation. And that's why Christianity, church. Uh, in, is being blamed for the uh, ills of the planet uh, due to man's um, uh, central position, God-given position, uh, and as modern ecologists would say, his selfish, his selfishness, placing himself above uh, the animals and the plants and the minerals. So this this whole uh, idea of man's um, um, God-given position in the world is one which is entirely challenged by the modern uh, ecological um, uh, movement. The holiness of our first parents with its accompanying rights and privileges is called the supernatural image of God in man. Uh, hence, man was a partaker in, a sharer in the divine nature. Uh, and that's the definition of grace. By grace, man participates in God's own life. So it's a wonderful thing, of course, to think how man, uh, the supreme, uh, the um, highest uh, work of a mighty God's um, creation upon earth in the visible world, having body and, and soul. Below, of course, the angels, um, but then invisible beings, spirits, uh, Almighty God, uh, man has this wonderful gift, free gift from Almighty God to be created in the image of God himself, 
but more than that, to be created, to be to called to be called to share in, in God's own life here below and in eternity. In addition to this um, this gift, this incredible gift, unthinkable gift, really, uh, of grace. I mean, it's it's extraordinary that Almighty God wanted to create us create us anyway in the first place. He who has everything, uh, and yet to call to want to create us in His image, and then to call us to share in His own uh, divine life. It's it's. Uh, only Almighty God could think of think of such a thing. Um, so, in addition to the the, the um, gift of creation and the gift of supernatural life, supernatural grace, other extraordinary privileges were granted to our first parents. And Father Low here uh, lists four. So they were possessed of a higher knowledge than we have. God filled them with the knowledge of understanding and created in them the science of the spirit, book of Ecclesiasticus. And Adam gave proof of his insight into the inner nature of things by giving appropriate names to, the, to all the animals. It's in the book of Genesis. Uh, he was also enlightened by God in regard to his supernatural uh, destiny. So this 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 uh, special knowledge uh, given by Almighty God to Adam. Secondly, that the the senses of our first parents uh, never rebelled against reason, against uh, uh, against the soul, and hence the flesh did not rebel against the spirit, as, as we know full well due to our own sorry experiences and the struggles that there is this constant combat, as St. Paul describes it, between uh, flesh and, and spirit, between doing that which we know to, uh, doing that which is what we know to be bad and, and yet not, not following that which is good. So this constant struggle that was absent in Adam and Eve. Uh, hence, they were both naked and yet were not ashamed because there's no rebellion of the lower appetites. Um, uh, just as their souls obeyed God, says St. Augustine, so the body obeyed the soul and was subject to it without resistance. Because we know how often we precisely, our, our lower senses rebel against the, the, the higher senses when it comes to, I don't know, to to making time for prayer, for doing spiritual reading, for acts of sacrifice, for um, generosity in our duties of state, uh, for works of, of mercy, and all these things, how, uh, uh, how there is this uh, rebellion, really, of, of our lower nature against our higher nature. Um, this was never, not the case in Adam and Eve. Uh, thirdly, they were never to be subjected to disease suffering or death god created man incorruptible um, these wonderful uh, gifts which uh, were to be lost um, subsequently by 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 adam and interestingly here and i'm, I'm not uh, i'm not a hundred percent sure um, 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 about um, uh, about this, because something I've, I've not really um, um, either come across before or or um, um, realized before. But the immortality of their body was dependent upon the tree of life, whose fruits were a protection against sickness and death. Uh, question from my side: Has anybody else come across this before? What can elucidate this for me? Was it also something which is um, which is um, uh, something um, uh, no doubt orthodox, but something which is 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 um, is new to them? And any comments here? No, I've never heard of that before, Father. No. There we go. Thank you. Yes, likewise. It's it's interesting because we we read of the book of the of the 
I said the of the tree of life, and then the the tree of um, of uh, of knowledge and so on. Uh, so it's 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 interesting. No doubt this is based upon I would imagine upon the fathers and so on. But it's something which has uh, which I've not uh, I've not I've noticed pre previously or, or understood previously. It's, it's an interesting interesting point. Which gut bacteria and things like that would have worked to aid their health before the fall. Sure, surely, surely yes, because Almighty God of course designs the human body in this wonderful way so that so with its bodily functions and necessities and digestive system and all sorts. It's true that some people of course argue that or claim that man perhaps was not uh, a meat eater <laughs> Before the fall, I think it's one of those opinions people can 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 have. I mean, I think obviously man's uh, um, uh, jaw structure, being able both to um, to bite and to chew and uh, and all these things suggest that well, he was designed, so to speak, to to be a meat eater from the get go. But uh, I know that some people choose to think otherwise, and that's one of the things we'll eventually find out in heaven. Um, but uh, but certainly, man man's body had all the bodily Let's say functions and and as 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 ours do. He was not an angel in in that sense for sure. Um, so the bodies were uh, not immortal in the same sense as their souls. Uh, their souls were absolutely immortal. Uh, um, it was impossible for them to die, impossible also for our souls to die because they're spirits. Um, uh, immortality belongs to the very nature of the soul. When Almighty God creates a spirit, uh, because he does nothing in vain, he could not create a spirit then to destroy the spirit. Uh, that's why it's souls by their nature are in, uh, immortal. They will not die. There will not. There will not be an end to their existence. Uh, whereas the body is by nature subject uh, to death. So they were Adam and Eve were preserved from let's say the natural course of things, whereby bodily matter decays. Uh, an example, perhaps you know, of uh, things um, in the digestive process and and in the gut and all these things. Uh, issues of uh, of digestion and, and change and assimilation and all these things. So naturally speaking, matter does does is transformed, does 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 decay. But Adam and Eve were preserved from that um, bodily uh, corruption and those things which precisely lead to um, uh, to, to death, uh, disease, uh, suffering, uh, and, and pain and all these things. So. And fourthly, they were placed in a lovely garden, the Garden of Eden, or Paradise, where all manner of, true, of trees grew, fair to behold and pleasant to eat of. So this this world, this earthly uh, paradise. Some people like to uh, like to try and work out where the Garden of Eden was. Even some people saying it must have been in England somewhere, or maybe up in the north of Scotland, and all these ideas because people would love to have paradise uh, in their own land or country. I open a brackets here because I was re-reading re recently about um, Taillard de Chardin, not his theology and cosmology and all that I say for your reassurance, but um, his part in the Piltdown Man um, fraud and how Piltdown Man, was it down there in I want to say Sussex was put together with uh, uh, a man's parts of a man's skull and then parts of an orangutan's uh, jaw. And this, this of course, sh shows that man in his evolution, uh, this was a sort of missing link, I think that was the whole claim at the time back in the early 20th century. But part of this was also to show that um, out of a sort of um, nationalistic spirit, uh, so, so the article claimed that the English and with their great empire and all the rest of it could say yes the first man came from England uh, the missing link would come to modern man and all that 
of course, the French scientists of the day were opposed to all this, also on nationalistic grounds. How can it be that the first man comes from England? Impossible, he must have been a French man, and all the rest of it. Um, so trying to find out where the Garden of Eden was is one of these things we'll also find out in, in, in heaven. Uh, uh, tradition, it was always believed to have been somewhere there in, in, the, in the Middle East. Uh, but I've had, I have heard people quite seriously trying to say it's up in, up in Orkney and so on. So, uh, so there we go. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, so the, the men, the first, our first man, first woman, were created a little less than the angels. Their happiness was almost equal to the happiness of the angels when they were uh, created, because they enjoyed the peace of innocence and the possession of God. Uh, God himself conversed with them, and uh, the, the legends we come across of the perfect bliss of primitive man are indeed preserved through our own day amongst uh, heathen uh, nations. Um, and uh, the, this age of the world was called the Golden Age. And it's also something when they say whole ecological uh, movement that there existed a Golden Age when man was at harmony with nature. We've seen that man, well, there was a harmony between man and, and nature, um, and that this 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 uh, primitive and natural harmony was lost when man we began to abuse the natural world, exploit the natural world, and sin through pollution and so on. We we're talking about this in recent, uh, just recently, different sermons and so on, and how uh, um, salvation now will only come to man in the church of ecology through sustainability that's the new buzzword and the means of means of salvation uh so and of course people forgetting well this there was indeed yes a natural state of absolute bliss uh, and yet the god-given gift uh which man precisely lost to his own fault uh through the first um, through the first sin and so trying to um to get back to this primitive state of harmony and and uh, and blessedness and uh, 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 is 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 fanciful uh, is a denial, in fact, of what we're going to look at now: the fall of man, and um, uh, and that's of course the, the, these ideas that we must get back to this primitive state of innocence and harmony is no doubt one of the reasons why these tribes from these, let's say, hidden parts of the world like Amazonia are being extolled as being, yes, the examples of, you know, of uh, this, this um, blissful harmony, oneness with Mother Earth, and therefore we should uh, emulate these people and, 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 and we barbarians should, should uh, learn from them and, and so on. Uh, it's everything's up, up, upside down as if civilization did not come through a blessed Lord, his grace, the church, Christian civilization and, and so on. So it's this neo-paganism which really accompanies this whole modern ecum ecum um, ecumenical, ecological uh, movement. So Adam received sanctifying grace with the uh, special privileges uh, accompanying it not only for himself but also for all his descendants and that's very important to remember that Adam received these things not just in a personal way but as head of the whole human race and therefore what he would do if it would correspond with these blessings and graces or not would have repercussions not just for him not just for Eve but for all his descendants uh, and if we forget that, we find it unjust that we, all these thousands of years later, uh, still uh, suffer from the wounds of original sin, even after baptism. But Adam had this unique place as head of the human race. According to God's dispensation, his supernatural as well as his natural gifts were to descend to the whole human race but on the condition that he should remain faithful and obedient to God, his creator. Uh, and so, of course, uh, modern man trying to explain away the ills of this world by blaming 
um, man's preponderance due to uh, divine revelation um, uh, forgets that uh, um, there are c conditions attached to having the earthly paradise, which precisely obedience, fidelity to Almighty God, and of course the Mighty God uh, and His place in this, in in the, in the universe, in in our lives, and everything else is something which is anathema to these uh, to these uh, neo pagans. So the trial, the trial of Adam and Eve. Like the angels, the first parents, our first parents, were subjected to a trial. And the Lord God took man and put him into the paradise of pleasure to dress it and to keep it, so like a gardener. So it wasn't just there you know, in a hammock with his gin and tonic and a big cigar, to dress it and to keep it. So it was this, uh, this wonderful responsibility as guardian, you could say, in a certain sense of, of the paradise. And Almighty God commanded him, saying, of every tree of paradise thou shalt eat, you can eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in what days soever thou shalt eat of it, thou shalt die uh, the death. <clears throat> we know, of course, how Adam will be and he will be seduced by the devil in the shape of a uh, serpent. So, and how our first parents transgressed the divine command. Eve took of the fruit and did eat and gave it to her husband who did eat also. Um, now, of course, this whole threat, so to speak, this warning rather, if they were to eat of the forbidden fruit would result in death. Uh, did Ab Could Adam and Eve have um, an understanding of what death was? Obviously, if they were to kill precisely animals and, and fish um, and, uh, and, and so on, to, to eat and enjoy, they could see how things could live one moment and cease to live the next. But obviously, that was, uh, but when it came precisely to human misery and suffering and, um, uh, and death, that was something which was outside their own experience by, by definition. The sin of our first parents was not just a sin of disobedience, as it certainly was, breaking the divine command. It was also a sin of pride, like the sin of uh, Lucifer and the rebellious angels. Because they wished to be like God, uh, the devil saying, oh yes, if you eat of this, you'll be like gods, you'll be like God himself. So this the sin of pride. Also was a sin of unbelief, uh, disbelief, unbelief, because they believed the devil more than God. Almighty God said, well, if you do this, the following will happen. The serpent whispers, oh, no, it's not the case. Eat and you'll be, everything will be well and even better with you. So it was a sin of unbelief in Almighty God's uh, word. Also a sin of disobedience, doing exactly what God had expressly forbidden them to do. And also a sin of ingratitude, because God had bestowed the greatest possible favours uh, upon them. Of course, in every sin there is an element of ingratitude for the gifts of Almighty God has given us, um, creation and our uh, upbringings and formation and, and talents and gifts and possibilities and graces and all these things. And so when we turn our back upon Almighty God, uh, through through sin, especially through grievous sin, then there's an element of, of real ingratitude there. This sin of Adam and Eve was a, a grievous sin, a mortal sin, a mortal sin which kills the life of grace in the soul, kills this divine gift, this divine participation. They could indeed have easily kept this one command uh, once again with their lower senses being absolutely subject to their higher senses the higher reason uh, with all these helps to divine grace conversation with almighty god this what this earthly paradise so they could indeed have kept it it wasn't something impossible by any means um, and they knew also what would happen if they were to were to transgress this uh, command they, 
So, and by the very dire warning which Almighty God gave them, they were very intelligent. They did not have the cloudy intelligences of the rest of us, because they were all, for mighty God, was all goodness and light and love and mercy and uh, and so on. If he gives such dire warnings about transgression, then then this must be a very serious matter. So there we go. From the severity of the penalty, they could readily see the importance of the command. Uh, they possessed a higher knowledge and were well aware that their sin would bring the greatest misfortunes upon themselves and their descendants. Uh, now, of course, they could not foresee all the consequences of their sin. Uh, and and that's, of course, is the huge difference between the sin of Adam and the sin of Lucifer, because Lucifer, uh, with his higher angelic uh, intelligence could and did foresee all the consequences of his rebellion against Almighty God in the initial trial, the original trial of, of, of all the angels. And that's why there's no, that's why the angels, the devils cannot repent because they foresaw all the consequences of their rebellion. Adam and Eve did not foresee all the consequences and therefore could come to be sorry, to regret, to repent, and therefore to benefit from uh, Almighty God's mercy and our blessed Lord as Redeemer and so on. Uh, Father Lowe mentions how some of the um, ancient myths uh, speak about the tradition of, uh, of, of the fall. Uh, for example, in the story of Pandora's box, uh, so Jupiter gave Pandora a box enclosing all human ills. Uh, the box was opened by her out of curiosity and all the ills escaped over the earth. Now, hope, which was also in the box, was, also, was all that she prevented from escaping. Uh, so there was this original uh, fault, curiosity, whatever, but there remained hope. Uh, so as we'll, as we know, there was the promise of the Redeemer to crush the head of the serpent, and therefore our first parents in their fallen state had hope. The consequences of the fall, sin when it is com completed begetteth death, says St. James. Uh, so the introduction of death, uh, human death, in, in, into the world. Um, they forfeited all their supernatural gifts, uh, notably grace. They were expelled from paradise and became liable to eternal damnation. Now, they did not lose the natural image of God, but the understanding, intelligence, the mind was weakened, was darkened rather, and their will weakened. And they became subject uh, in their bodies to sickness, suffering and death, and also in their minds, of course, as such a thing as, as mental as illness, illness of the mind and, and, and suffering. Interestingly here, another point which Father Lowe makes, which is also food for thought, uh, he quotes St. Thomas, who says that um, even if Adam and Eve had not sinned and lost the gifts, destined for their descendants, still each one of their descendants, being endowed with understanding and free will, would have had to undergo a trial similar to theirs. That's an interesting, interesting thought. So had Adam and Eve remained faithful and loyal and obedient, uh, then their descendants, who would also have been born um, uh, with these great gifts, um, intelligence and uh, and um, uh, su subjection of the lower faculties to the higher faculties and um, and being preserved from suffering and, and, and death and living in God's grace they would also have had to go through a trial um, uh, individually it's an interesting thought um, 
I was visiting a gentleman in hospital recently, and as you do, you sometimes come up with these bloopers, which um, uh, which uh, which um, are not are not things to have to do, but often but entirely out of f fatigue or, or carelessness. And so, going to a person who was bed bedside in a hospital with um, up there in Paris, and uh, and trying to be trying to have the what to call the the, bed, the bedside manner of the visiting priest and all the rest of it and then trying to make conversation about you know how things are going and and this was just recently and so coming up with the awful expression so how was your autopsy and uh what are the results of your autopsy now uh autopsy i think is the american word we would use to say really post-mortem and the, and the individual said to me, Father, it's not that bad. Had I had an autopsy, I would not be here talking to you. And so, of course, the word I was looking for was biopsy. And of course, some sort of a, there was an in, a surgical intervention to try and find out what's what's going on in a person. So that was my recent uh, blooper of the month, asking the person, how was your autopsy? Uh, so it's true, autopsies are performed on dead people, not on living people, as I'm sure you all understand. There we go. Uh, going on then to chapter eight, um, just because it's a short chapter and it's on original uh, sin, and therefore it's very much in keeping with the, what we've just been talking about. Uh, actually, before doing that, I'll just quote, I'll just look at here on a book on, um, on um, a Catholic dogma from Father Ludwig Ott. And, uh, and this is De Fide, so it's something which is taught as um, doctrine of the church, which must believe, therefore, to be Catholic. So, uh, in the present order of salvation, death is a punishment for sin. That's De Fide. Um, uh, and the next one here, also De Fide, so it's, it's um, revealed Catholic, revealed um, uh, teaching, the dogmatic teaching. All human beings subject to original sin are subject to the law of death. And the next uh, teaching here, which is called a definite. Uh, teaching of the church, the, yes, the, the, the teaching, the, the certain, the definite teaching of the church is that with death, the possibility of merit or demerit or conversion ceases. So it's precise during a life that we can precisely perform good works, um, regain uh, living God's grace, regain God's grace, and so on, and and. Uh, uh, um, or precisely lose and neglect God's life and grace and commandments. Uh, so the chance of um, of um, um, of uh, meriting Almighty God's um, uh, grace and eternal life uh, uh, ceases at the moment of death. The three things there, which are part of Catholic, uh, first two are certainly. Dogmatic teaching. The third is the is the let's say the the definite teaching of, of the church without having been proclaimed de fide. <clears throat> so, by one man sin entered into the world, and by sin death, and so death passed upon all men because all had sinned. That's Saint Paul to the to the Romans. So Adam's sin is called original sin because he received sanctifying grace and the other supernatural gifts, not for himself only, but for all his descendants. Uh, and hence, by his disobedience, he plunged the whole human race into the greatest misery. Uh, sin, with all its disastrous consequences, passed from Adam to all mankind so that we all came into this world infected with original sin. It's called original sin because we have not ourselves actually <clears throat> committed it, but have inherited it from our first parent, was the origin or source of all mankind. 
and uh, this image is given here by Father Low of a, of a spring, spring of water. If the spring of water is tainted, is corrupted, uh, then the water flowing from it is also tainted and corrupted. So, help us to understand this 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 notion. Uh, Holy Scripture teaches clearly that all men are born with the stain of original sin. By one man, sin entered into this world, and by sin, death, and so death passed upon all men because all had sinned. Therefore, as by the offence of one, unto all men came condemnation. So also by the justice of one, unto all men comes justification. So here St. Paul is comparing uh, our blessed Lord with Adam. Sin and death came by Adam. Grace and life come by the second Adam, our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, regarding uh, tradition and um, original sin, uh, this doctrine has always been taught by the church. Um, you've had heretics like Pelagius, Morgan, back there, this British monk back in the um, uh, fourth century, who claimed that Adam, by his sin, had merely given a bad example to his descendants. And he was, of course, that's part of his condemned uh, teaching. And St. Augustine, the great um, adversary uh, against uh, Pelagius, uh, wrote, um, uh, to, um, proclaimed, I have not invented original sin, for the Catholic Church has from the beginning professed belief in it. Uh, so taught from the outset, but proclaimed to be an article of faith, day for day, an article of faith at the Council of Ephesus in 431. Uh, also, as the practice, uh, an important practice of the church has been infant baptism, which also shows how the church always believed precisely in um, original sin being transmitted uh, to those born into this world. Uh, the um, uh, so baptism of infants practiced from the earliest times, and which Oregon, church father, um, although not a saint because of other errors he himself uh, professed, he declared to be of apostolic institution. So baptism of infants, of course, you have these uh, uh, more recent um, sects and groups such as the Baptists interestingly who say no only adults should be baptized so it's ironic how they call themselves Baptists but in fact go against the uh, earliest practice of the church which is infant baptism. Um, now indeed the infant baptism would be a meaningless ceremony if those infants were not born with original sin because as Saint Peter says baptism is administered for the remission of sins uh, and um, um, so the idea that people should not be baptized into their adults leaves them in the sin leaves them um, not knowing they have a loving father in heaven uh, who wants to share his life with them from the earliest moments of their of being born and um, uh, so it deprives them of this of this of this uh, divine um, uh, fatherhood uh, and um, in many ways is a practical denial of the sinfulness of the sinful state uh, of, of of babies and, and and children and therefore in some ways it can be seen as a denial practical denial of the doctrine of original sin point is made here by Father Lowe that, <coughs> excuse me, original sin is a state, not an act. So it doesn't mean a country, of course, when he says it's a state, it's an actual, it's, um, it's not something we have ourselves committed. Uh, we haven't committed an action, a bad action, which results in original sin. We are born in the state of, in the condition of original sin. It's a sinful state in which every descendant of Adam is born into this world. It consists, above all, in the absence of sanctifying grace. 
Uh, hence, instead of being born with the grace and being therefore holy and pleasing to God, uh, such as Adam and Eve were, we are, when they were created, we are born in the same state in which Adam was after his fall, and when he was precisely um, uh, banished from the Garden of Eden. This state is displeasing to God because he did, he did not wish it, and for this reason it is called sin. It goes against Almighty God's um, command, uh, Almighty God's will, and dishonors Almighty God. Hence, original sin, though not actually committed by us, is nevertheless truly sin. <coughs> Um, we know how, and we'll see in due course, how grace and the right of inheriting the kingdom of heaven is restored to man by baptism. But the other consequences of original sin remain after baptism. So the darkening of the understanding, the inclination of the will to do evil, so-called concupiscence, and all sorts of hardships, pains, sickness, and, and death. So uh, weakness, uh, ignorance, lust, and all these things, these so-called wounds of original sin remain, remain in us even after baptism. Those who die with the stain of original sin cannot see the face of God in heaven, but they do not suffer the pains of hell unless they have committed grievous in themselves and have died without repenting of it. That's why the church's doctrine on limbo, that um, babies and those akin to babies, such as adults who have never enjoyed the use of reason, for example, um, uh, um, um, if they, if so, a baby to die without baptism, uh, will not suffer, will be in place of natural happiness, um, uh, but will not enjoy the the uh, the, uh, the participation in the uh, beatific vision. Will will not be will not be in 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 participate eternally in the divine life of Almighty God. But they will indeed be happy, uh, comparison with the great happiness we can have even in, in, in this world. There we go. And lastly. The importance of the doctrine of original sin, because of course you know how modern men, and not least due to people like Rousseau, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and the whole of mod modern education, are based upon the denial of original sin. Men are born good, they're born nice, they may become bad due to society or due to influences, or be victims or whatever. There's no such thing as people being born um, Contaminated by 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 sin of Adam and all that. So this whole this whole denial of original sin is very much one of the um, I was about to say sins of uh, modern age and indeed also of the modern church in so, in so many ways, uh, whereby baptism has been relegated to become an initiation ceremony into the life of the church, but nothing to do with precisely restoring. Uh, giving grace to the, to the, to the child uh, um, and all the rest of it and uh, taking and washing away original sin. The history of mankind and of each human individual is unintelligible to those who do not believe in original sin. So life, the world, suffering and, um, and um, crime and um, Poverty and uh, and uh, heartbreaks and upsets. These things are unintelligible for people who did not believe in original sin. Um, this, the doctrine of original sin, uh, explains the many riddles of our lives. It tells us why our wills are so prone to evil, why we fall so easily into temptation and rise again with such difficulty and why we must fight continually if we wish to remain good and advance in perfection, and why we must avoid the occasions of sin. 
only original sin can explain why this world, with all its beauty and loveliness, is and always will be a valley of tears, a veil of tears. You see, it's this idea the ecologists cannot understand. Uh, and then the educational system that does not take into consideration original sin and its dire consequences is doomed to failure. Hence, the whole modern educational system is doomed to, uh, to failure. So people may chuck money and more teachers this and better equipment the other and, and nicer buildings and everything else. But no, you don't take into consideration um, the reality of man's uh, corrupted nature, uh, original sin, with his ongoing um, wounds. Then they'll never be able to um, um, to address the real issues because they'd fail to understand uh, man's man's uh, fallen uh, nature, even though restored by by which needs to be restored by grace, which remains always um, inclined to that which is bad, uh, ignorance and weakness and concupiscence because of the wounds of original sin. So. Um, and we see now how in the present moment people in the, around the world in Lebanon and in Hong Kong and in Chile and so on campaigning and protesting and doing this that and the other and yet they're all missing the point all missing the point there we go so that's the end of this uh, little um, of these two chapters chapter seven and eight got time for one or two questions comments uh, observations uh, reclamations Father. Hello. Do you know um, Father Lowe is saying that um, if Adam and Eve had sort of passed their test, the rest of us would still have had to go through it. I was yes. wondering if that, that's true because um, surely if we all pay the, the price for Adam and Eve's sin, uh, likewise we'd also gain the glory for their, I don't know, ascen ascension, ascent, ascension. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're quite right. That's why it's an interesting comment made, and I would I'll have to double check this with Saint Saint Thomas and so on. Um, uh, that um, um, that each individual would have to precisely to come to come through a a, a trial by his um, so as to be deserving, so to speak, of eternal of eternal bliss, a bit like the angels. It wasn't just, of course, Lucifer's Lucifer's revolt. Lucifer was joined in this by a third of the angels, or whatever the figure is, and likewise, two thirds of the angels, precisely, sided with Saint Michael and uh, obedience and fidelity uh, and adoration of Almighty God. So there was these collective trial. Uh, and also each individual angel was concerned in this and had the chance to 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 um, to um, be faithful to mighty God or, or to rebel and so likewise um, you could say likewise therefore Adam who um, uh, who had to go through a trial whilst affecting all people, still did not um, preserve people from also themselves having to go through a trial. But the big difference is this, that had Adam not committed original sin, would be much, would be much stronger in the trial each individual would have had to go through because of the intelligence and will and subjection of our lower senses and all the rest of it. So Adam's sin weakened all of us uh, in this, um, that, that's for sure. Uh, but, he, but his victory would have strengthened us all in this, but would not have removed from each individual the need, coming from mighty God and mighty God's decision, that each person somehow or other personally um, merits salvation. Uh, I think that those may be the elements of an answer, but it's an intriguing thought, which which uh, uh, which uh, also something which is is um, is um, uh, something I've not picked upon in the past. Thank you. 
So, Father, what you're saying is then that um, what Adam sin did was not necessarily didn't um, lose us heaven, but it just lost us the strength uh, to overcome temptation. So, um, no, Adam's sin did indeed lose us heaven because he lost grace for himself and all his descendants. Uh, the point I was clumsily trying to make was that had Adam not sinned, then we would all have been born with God's grace and uh, on the road to heaven with intelligence and will, and subjection of our lower faculties and, uh, and uh, immortality and all these great gifts, uh, uh, but still would have had to face a trial. But in that event of Adam not having fallen, so uh, we would have been all the stronger to face the individual trial. A mighty God, according to St. Thomas, would have sent us. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not I'm wanting to imply here that Adam's sin was just something which weakened us. No, Adam's sin was something which precisely uh, uh, um, took away the life of grace for all men, um, all his descendants. Uh, uh, but his victory, his victory, uh, had had he been faithful in his in the original trial, <coughs> would have had would have benefited all of mankind, uh, uh, and they would they would have been all the stronger in in their trials. So that's what I'm trying to sort of contrast. But of course, we only know fact precisely of Adam's uh, sin and all the consequences. And so the the conjecture as to the consequences of Adam's uh, victory are perhaps less less obvious or less clear to us. Okay, thank you, Father. You're welcome. Very good. So, um, uh, just as a, as a finishing note, we have a little lake. Um, uh, what do they call these? A pleasure lake. Uh, nearby to here in the next in the next village and it's an interesting story which is sort of sort of connected to our our, our theme this evening because it used to be a cemetery it used to be a cemetery and this part of france they had uh, lots of coal mining back in the day and uh, the story goes i was told by the villagers around here that in the back just about 30 years ago or so um some huge mine shafts under the neighboring village collapsed, uh, uh, taking away some, I don't know, 35 acres, I think, of, of land, including the local cemetery. And in due course, it's all filled up with water and it has become the local pleasure lake for the next next village. So it's a bit of a of a of a sobering thought that where the place people go to uh, to enjoy their picnics and little boat trips and, and drinks and so on actually was was a cemetery and they might even still come across um, human remains down there somewhere so that's my little gruesome story for your um, relish this evening good shall we call it a night unless there are any other burning questions um, we can end with the prayer I'll take the, the go, go, go on. Was that one question there coming through? Caroline, can you hear? She she's having a bit of trouble at the moment. No, I I can't hear anybody except you just now, Kate. Asking her what a question is because she's trying to get online. <laughs> If you can hear her, Kate, you're welcome to repeat the question for me. I can't actually hear Caroline myself. Okay, I'm, I'm not getting any response. It's all right, Father. I suppose you must... Very good. Well, perhaps another time if, if there were questions relating to the subject next time around in a couple of weeks or so. Very good. Well, thank you for your uh, attention. Good being with you. Look forward to seeing some of you this um, uh, in, uh, not this weekend, but the f weekend after for the Sunday Mass there down in the south. Um, yeah. Is it the third? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. God bless you all. Let's end with a little prayer.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, in our life, our sweet mother, and our son. To thee, <laughs> we cry for banishment of thee. To thee, do we send up our sighs. Morning, morning, and morning, and tears. So and then, yeah. most gracious, the night, the Lord, and now to this, bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, a loving, a sweet Virgin Mary, the Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us that we make the of the promises of Christ. The blessing, benedicted on impotentis, Hach, Christus, Venus, Virgin, Sanctus, Descendant, Super, Vosit, Manus, Semper, Vibiscum, Amen. Good night, God bless you all, see you next time. Thanks, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.